know it you know what it is it is the collective podcast where christian's here jerry's here and it's gonna be a show of a lifetime christian how you doing today i am doing great we're here in uh, jerry's was it box square it's Times square oh yeah it's the uh, it's the greatest you know we're on 42nd and 9th in staten island oh yeah we're in uh we're deep 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 in staten island the place that everybody loves right near the landfill where we're the only two of Staten Island accents. Oh yeah, so I guess that's 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 where it's gonna go now, Staten Island accents. But I want to welcome everybody to the first episode of the Collective Podcast right here on YouTube. And um, pretty soon, I'm gonna to try to find a way to get on Stitcher and iTunes and all those great places. But for right now, you can find us right here on YouTube at the Caputo Productions YouTube page. And most importantly, you could see this on the Discovery Channel as far as how he's going to do everything. Oh, yeah, well, I'm going to discover a lot of things. But, um, <clears throat> so Jerry, so a couple weeks ago you had um, the uh, the Sing Till Sunrise event. To, to tell, talk about a little bit of that. I'm but surprised was, you're still not hung over from that day. Oh, my God. What a so very crazy. festive occasion. Great cause. We were able to help... Uh, over 70 kids suffering from cancer going to summer camp for six weeks free of charge this is our third installment doing this throughout the staten island and brooklyn area first time we did this back in january fundraised about 520 520 dollars and then this time around we did 936 so when you think about it i don't do anything for raffles i don't do sponsorships i don't do ticket sales and it's a free event for everybody so i only do donation boxes to move forward on it so everything that you see from those events is all by the mission and promoting the mission to get that going forward so very nice event and so glad i had over 70 people stuck in steinie's pub together smushed and loving that's, each other that's a tight spot right there oh boy um so it was karaoke so it was it was a lot of fun how did that idea get started the idea gets got started from me loving to sing joe volante one of our proud lovely producers his amazing celine dion voice for popeye oh, he was great voice. he was great but just from a bunch of us loving karaoke having a passion for it always like going out for it and stuff like that why not do something that's fun but also good to help out other people so that's always the way that i've looked about it for doing a fundraiser that's that's a great way to raise money for kids to go to uh Go, go to summer camp. Uh, how many uh, how many kids can you bring now to summer camp? Now we're trying to increase our enrollment to about a hundred kids this year. Mm. So our goal, because it takes six thousand dollars to put a child through summer camp for about uh, six or seven weeks. So from that, we would like to in increase that to a hundred uh, kids, where we only had seventy four from last year. So. We're definitely on a mission to move that forward, and we're very excited to make it happen. That's great. So when's, when's the next one? The next one's going to be April 21st at Steiny's Pub again. We're going to be cramped and loving each other like it was yesterday. <laughs> uh, where's Steiny's Pub? Steiny's Pub is at 3 Hyatt Street right by the St. George Theater on the same block. All right, awesome. So if uh, anybody can uh, get out to that, it's a great cause. Say hi to Jerry. Say hi to me. More, more importantly, sing your heart out. And uh, donate to a good cause. Get some kids in uh, in summer camp. And I have scorecards, so you better sing bad. <laughs> so speaking of uh, events, Jerry, a lot of people like to know how you how you and I met. Oh yes. And uh, we met at one. It of your, was an event, all right. Oh yeah, we. I met at one of your events, right? One of your uh, wonderful. My first show at the Muddy Cup. Oh boy. When it was called the Muddy Cup. Now it's just called gone. No. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I, 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 I remember meeting you just just very briefly. I, I was walking in and you were walking out and um But did we really yeah, meet each other well, that night though? Oh well, yeah, I mean it was but it was it was I I I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell you a funny story that I don't think I don't think I ever told you. Um this was way back when Facebook was in its uh, infancy was uh I knew somebody in uh, film school when I was in film school looked it's almost kind of like you. And when you Face friend requested me on Facebook for your event to get people to come. I know you were friends with Joe and everybody. Uh, 
uh, he looked exactly like you. And I thought you were him from school. So I, was, mm. I, accepted, I accepted the friend request and you and me started talking. And I'm like, this is not the guy from film school. And I know I couldn't say your name right. So I called you Gerald. You know, because I associated I see Gerald, how it is. I, 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 I associated you with a Gerald from Hey Arnold. Because you kind of had the, the... The square head? The square the square haircut. Well, I actually have a football head. Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> but it was, at, it, was at, um, it was at... It was at your event. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember um, who was playing there. Was it... Uh, I think it was... Uh, Pro- was Process of Fusion? Uh, Process of Fusion was on my first show, if I'm not mistaken. I think Hick also played as mm-hmm. well. Uh, Every Night Drive? No? Every Night Drive came in a little later on my shows. <laughs> So I used to book a lot within 2010. They were at least on one or two of my shows before they broke up. Yeah, I I remember I remember Process of Fusion being there, which uh, we'll, we'll try to get Justin on the podcast. Yes, we will. I know he's got a podcast too. I forget the name of it. It's a nice one. It's a cheap. great podcast. I, I would do a cheap plug, but I can't remember the name off the top of my head right now. <laughs> Make uh, sure we don't edit that out. We want Justin to hear that one. Oh, God. Speaking of... Speaking of... Uh, excuse me. Speaking of... Speaking of people that are going to be on uh, the podcast um, soon, is uh, Fuzz Fuzz on the lens? I have to say, yeah. when you're when you consider the type of people that come from Staten Island, now you see people who are well established, who are well embraced in the community, and some people who I won't name epitomize the stereotypes of the Staten Island community. Oh yeah. So right. I'm proud to say that Fuzz on the Lens is a film production company are doing things beyond the measures. They're definitely reaching boundaries that many people aspire to do, and they've done it at such a young age, being the fact that some of them are like between 25 to 30, says a lot about their work ethic and their diligence to make things happen. And you and I were at the uh, Abnormal Attraction World premiere a couple weeks ago. What a crazy event. Sold out at, at uh, at at the School of Visual Arts, sold out packed house to watch a normal attraction that was our second time watching it and i have to say yeah. it got better a second time and i do not say that about a lot of oh, movies yeah. um uh we we went to a private screening <laughs> back in september and when i first saw it i was i was thrown aback because you know you and me we're both we're both well i'm a filmmaker you're the producer of a lot but uh, it was it was you you know how hard it is to make a short film Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let, let alone what they did about an hour and a half, hour 40 minute film, which is just beyond. And to keep people engaged for that long, not even aside from the production value, the post production, and how you cast people on the way, when you're engaging people between that time period of an hour to th- hour 30 to an hour 40, it's just remarkable to see what you can do with your creativity. And they got into their first festival, which the snowstorm yesterday, or two days ago, at the time that we were recording this, was like terrible. And they went, they took a road trip, road trip to Cincinnati for a Horror Hound Film Festival for their film. That's, that's dedication right there. It driving, really is. Driving through the snow and just, just ridiculous. But um, I'm, I'm just ecstatic for them. You know, their success is everybody else's success. It gets a lot more people talking about the forgotten borough that is that now. Their success is the only reason why we're going to be successful oh, <laughs> at, at uh, collective podcasting. Oh, yeah, here. of course. Um, but um, uh, so Abnormal Attraction, it's going to come out soon, I guess. Well, I don't want to put words in Fuzz's mouth because I, I, you know, I don't know. But it's on IMDb. Just look up Abnormal Attraction. If you've seen it, write a review. It helps them out for distribution and getting it on video and stuff like that. Um, and if you incorporate in your review that you were referenced from Collective Podcast, I'll write a nice review about you when I personally meet you in real life. Of course. And Better believe it. And uh, like them on Facebook, <laughs> Fuzz in the Lens, uh, and Abnormal Attraction. Um, cheap, cheap pop, cheap pug, plug. As I lose the so cheap, I'm actually about to pay you, Christian. Yeah, as I use as I lose the use of my tongue because I can't speak English. Um, if you find them, it's there on YouTube. You can see the trailer for it, um, which really 
I, I think it's a really great trailer. Yeah. The trailer... Speaking of trailers, <laughs> the trailer for the... Infinity I love Wars. how when I say the trailer, you're like, next subject. Yes. Speaking of trailers, I know that uh, I just showed it to you like literally five minutes before we went on the podcast, which uh, last week drops the, uh, what I think is the last, well, it's coming out April 27th. And for those of you that don't know, what I'm talking about is the big Infinity War Avengers trailer. Oh my God! Now, now Jerry, I want to get now. I, I'm I'm going to geek out, of course, but I'm going to let you, who's the who's the person. I'm going to grab a donut. Yeah, who who doesn't really know a lot about Avengers? Had maybe I think <clears throat> I think I actually what, seen three from what for from, someone who doesn't even watch movies from, for the from most what, part. From, from what I can remember, you saw the first <laughs> Avengers with me and Joe. Uh, you saw Age of Ultron with the group. And then you saw Ant Man, and those were the three movies oh, that you yes. saw. Oh yes, those were the three movies that you. And saw. I saw Thor back in 2011. Okay, so you saw, so you you've seen four films. So I'm surprised about that you're, one too. You're not really an expert, but you're like a uh, you're a casual viewer. So we all know everybody's going to geek out over like, oh my god, the Avengers are all going to die. But as a casual viewer, Jerry. What do you think of the Avengers trailer? I mean, I have to say, those movies are bound to make money, so whether you love or hate those types of movies, the fact that you've had 10 years of continuum of different franchises working together, having a collective of superheroes and embellishing a story to make sure that people can follow and they love it for every single time that a movie comes out, it just goes to show that it speaks volumes to so many people who see it. You know, the fact that they're bringing in hundreds of millions to even billions of dollars. It's it's just, it's something that needs to be admired, whether you're a fan of it or not. So here's the important question for everybody out there that wants to know Jerry's opinion. So are you a Iron Man fan? Or are you a Captain America fan? I am a Captain America fan because I love to say America. Okay. Well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back from our sponsors, uh, I'll kick out on the Infinity War trailer. So uh, we'll be right back. Love you. This episode of Collective Podcasting is sponsored by Da Piera. They're on 1970 Victory Boulevard. You like Italian cooking? Absolutely. Well, this is authentic Southern Italian cooking. They have a chef directly from Italy, which is in the city. Um, Great Italian food. They have they have pizza. They have um, uh, sandwiches. Authentic, real authentic Italian food. Ate there last week. Really great. I suggest everybody go and uh, tell them the Caputo Collective sent you. All right, Jerry. Second half. The episode. Excited? You know it, Mr. Right. Christian. So Geek out. So geek out on no the, pressure, on the Infinity Except War my show. pressure. Oh my god. So I definitely want to see this in IMAX. IMAX theater. Because I feel like it's ten years of build up. I've been invested in these movies for ten years. I'm gonna I'm gonna date myself here, but I was eighteen when uh So last year? Yeah, uh, yeah. When Iron Man came out. Um Everybody knows my love for Iron Man, and uh, I'm mentally preparing myself for him to die in this. But um, it's going to be very interesting because... Do you think um, we should get a tissue sponsor? Yeah. Yeah, we should definitely get a tissue sponsor. Uh, but um, I, it's very interesting now because Chris, Chris Evans, uh, Captain America, has said recently that he wants to leave. Um, or that his contract is up, and right when the reshoots are done, he's going to bid farewell. Uh, Rob Downey Jr. has said he wants to leave, but I don't know if he will actually wants to leave because you know they just back up a big boat of big truck of money and they'll just have him. It's come like back. when you kick him out the door, he's gonna come back for more. Oh yeah, of course. Um, and everybody else, they really set up the new the new blood really really well. Uh, Black Panther, I think, crossed the 1.2 billion dollar mark recently, and with Spider Man and all the other ones gonna be good um not really like overwhelmingly geeking out but 
I'm definitely going to see it. I'm really excited. It's called about adulting. It. Yeah, yeah, adulting. But no, it's really. I, I'm really excited about it. I'm tempering my ex, my expectations and excitement because if you over hype it, it's not going to be the way that you think it will come out as. But I'm going to be excited about it anyway. I'm, I want to get a whole group of people just going now. To if I was to overly geek out the day of the movie, yeah. would you still be excited? Well, I'd be a little concerned because if you've only seen four four of the movies, I'm like, what are you geeking out about? But uh, yeah, but I mean, geeking out, I'm definitely going to be leaving there in awe and excitement. Yeah, the Infinity War trailer. So we're going to have a new topic called Topics from the Collective. So about the Avengers movie, right? No, no, no. no. So. Uh, I sent out a poll on Facebook, on the uh, Collective Podcasting <laughs> Facebook. You can find us on Facebook at Collective Podcast. I'm trying to find it. Um, and uh, this topic was sent in by one of our followers, Danny Adams. And he asked the question, how has social media influenced movies and TV? Now, um, we have a, a special guest with us. To talk about the topic, our good friend Ian, Ian Usick, and um, he always talks about how social media has influenced everything, and I think he'd be a good person to actually talk about this. Ian is an aspiring millennial who's just trying to get his name out there because he's so entitled to make it happen. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so how do you think uh, influence, our social media has influenced uh, movies and TV? Well, definitely gets the word out quicker. Yeah. I know a show I watch Vikings um, every single day um, every time there's a new episode there's always an update on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook sort of showing like a 10 second snapshot of what happened in last night's episode and that keeps you coming back and it's definitely better for advertisers and marketing executives now with it yeah. used to be back in the day you had to depend on just a big ad I guess in like Manhattan or LA or movie trailers or commercials where now you can pick up the iPhone so just swipe and you see it. Com comparing to from before uh, social media came out which um, do, do, do you want to count like MySpace as like kind of because I don't, I don't remember seeing any like advertisements on MySpace. That was more for bands I feel. Well well yeah well now it's for bands but back then like when, when the advent yeah we're really dating ourselves here <laughs> yeah right when, uh, when, uh, when were we were movie things on MySpace when we were on remember. MySpace I don't remember if there were movies it had to have been at some point yeah, yeah. I remember oh. you could update and like add you could like put a music video or a movie trailer on yeah. your page remember that? I, I don't remember I don't remember there being any well I remember, remember like you could go to a band's yeah. MySpace but I don't remember there was like like Steven Spielberg didn't have a MySpace or like Mark Zuckerberg I, I think Martin Scorsese Martin Scorsese had a MySpace yeah, a MySpace I, really? I, 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 I was friends with Martin Scorsese <laughs> I actually friended um, cause I'm a big World War II fanatic no, no secret to anybody who's mm -hmm. listening um, I actually on MySpace befriended someone who was uh, he lived in Iceland he was an extra in the Clint Eastwood Flags of Our Fathers movie oh, nice. and he was telling me about what it was like to be directed by Clint Eastwood hmm. and to be filming on a beach and have explosions and you just cool it was like the I remember that I was about I must have been like 16 years old and you realize like social media back then that was like a microcosm of what it's going to become like you could talk to people right. instantly overseas with the topics you want that was really cool social media done right <laughs> yes yes um, now I think it's overkill a little bit. Yeah. But uh, if you want to, okay, so let's, let's just let's just do Facebook. I just want to make one yeah. comment though, because mm -hmm. something that Deadpool that what they used to do on their first film, they used to release newsletters on a monthly basis, kind of like on a trolling factor, mm -hmm. and they were even like trolling the fact of how they've done it on social media. So they would like purposely write in Comic Sans, and as you, if anybody tries to do like graphic design work, that is the most generic thing you could do trying to get yourself out there. Right. That was kind of the point, though. I feel exactly. Like he was trying to troll everything. That was kind of the point. Well, he's of Deadpool's very character. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's. That's really, that's that's pretty much how Deadpool got made was through. Mm. Well, I don't want to say like YouTube was social. Well, YouTube can kind of be social media in a sense. I keep forgetting that Deadpool was actually in that horrible X Men Origins movie <laughs> in that elevator scene. <laughs> but Ryan Reynolds is actually in there. It was funny. But uh, and he's, he doesn't have yeah. the mask on thing, right? He has just no, like, no, swords. he doesn't have the mask. Who was the other guy in there? Oh, it was, was it that Gambit? No, Gambit was, was in the movie, but he wasn't yeah, in the elevator. Yeah, it was it was it was Logan, but I'm not too sure. 
remember. But um, the, the social media was actually how that movie got made. Was that the somebody leaked the um, not a trailer but like a proof of concept mm. that was in that was in Fox. Was it Fox? And that just began. Yeah, yeah and that and that got really big, and people started sharing it on social media, and they saw that there was like a big audience Market for that. So they they decided, yeah, well, we'll make it. But mm -hmm. for Fit, do you want to use Facebook as like the basis of like before and after social media, where it's like social media is Facebook, and everything before Facebook, you had to really work on it. Like you had to do like coding and stuff. Uh, no, in terms of like advertising. Oh, in terms of like, like oh, okay. oh yeah, in terms of like trying to get people to like look looking for like look at us here collective podcast yeah it's like we have a facebook page we're promoting it it was easier to, even but i feel like now facebook's become like myspace almost like i don't have snapchat mm -hmm. but i've heard like snapchat is the new like yeah. every like even instagram is kind of becoming like what facebook was five years ago well i know well fa I, what is it instagram um it's kind of like father like son like grandson yeah, where's tom when you need him tom exactly space yeah. you gotta bring back a new oh, yeah, thing oh yeah is it is it we, like we're always there, children after a while it has to, it has <laughs> to be a mock page there is actually but, but is. isn't there a, is, is that when, really him? remember when facebook first came out and they would make like these groups and it would say what groups you're a part of it was like i miss tom from myspace <laughs> i remember that was being part of that like four million people are a part still of this still am i at top eight tom um, i remember i think mark zuckerberg might have had a myspace page i remember when i had facebook I deleted my MySpace when I graduated high school, and then I got Facebook. And I think that Mark Zuckerberg had a MySpace, I believe. Oh my god! But um, I remember at one point logging back in to check, and then I realized I still had it, and I had to delete it. And I saw Mark Zuckerberg had a MySpace page. I'm like <laughs> trying to get people to pull over to his side. But um, but but we we did that for Black Sun. With MySpace? The, uh, no, 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 <laughs> Facebook, Facebook, where yeah. we promoted everything. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like now it's a lot easier for stuff to get funded. Oh, way easier on, on, now. on Facebook, especially if you have a really good following. Well, what's cool? We can tie this into what's going on with the. Um, have you guys heard about? I didn't really read into it, but this thing about um, Facebook got in trouble because it's some kind of analytic mm -hmm. program yeah. that they they were like selling people's um, information. And oh, I saw like a meme that was promoting that particular cause. So they were comparing him to like Julian Assad. No, 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 no. no. I'm talking about. Um, I think the last two days there was a whole thing about. It's called Cambridge Analytica. Mm. It was a whole thing where it said that um, Facebook had sold users' data, and I think it was politicians were using it to to get votes and to like curb what kind of news they wanted to certain people. And now like mm. Facebook stock dropped a lot. Mm. I forgot where I was going with that. It was about um, I forgot where I was going with that. Something about well, Facebook. Um, that's a topic for another day. I yeah, guess. yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll we'll get back to that. Mm -hmm. I'll post it on Facebook later. Yeah, <laughs> but um. Yeah, but movie and everything, TV shows. I'm trying to think of... Uh, well, I don't think Game of Thrones would be as big if it wasn't for social media. Just because of the yeah. sheer fact of... If you remember all those reaction videos of... Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> the Red Wedding. Uh, no, the Red Wedding, everybody's reactions. Because mm -hmm. I think like people would know from word of mouth. Mm -hmm. But when people were on Facebook or seeing those videos of like people screaming and crying uh, when they're favorite character to spoil or when their <laughs> favorite when their character, favorite right. character everyone character you dies. love dies yeah. pretty much so don't just 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 don't have a favorite character you don't, don't get yeah. it don't um, get sucked into liking anybody because uh i think that grew the fan base were those videos of just people mm. like me sitting next to somebody who's let's say i read the book and you didn't read the book but I, and i knew about the red wedding i sit there pull my phone up be like ooh, look mm. at this i saw that yeah and um so i think that blew it up vikings i think really blew up because of um like facebook media. Yeah. Uh, I think the the Sopranos was really big, and they ended like right before MySpace. Was um, MySpace, because it was like oh seven, mm -hmm. and I can tell you that season. Spoiler: that season it was like eleven years ago. Uh, <laughs> spoiler: uh, the You're ending. Saying the Sopranos was on the Game of Thrones. No, no, no. the <laughs> ending. Network. The ending. Can you imagine how big oh, uh, it man. would be on Facebook the with that ending? Google News. Of, of like, of like, people think they're... Millions panic. People, <laughs> millions panic as they think their cable box goes out because of that damn ending. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine... Oh man, if that happened today, that would be just Oh insane. no, pe people would just be like, my TV, like a yeah, whole yeah. Facebook would be like, I think my TV broke. Is that anybody? My cable box let out. What happened in the ending of The Sopranos? I mean, just... my TV hasn't been working. <laughs> Your TV has not been working since New Year's Which, of like 2017. What made Facebook, I mean Facebook, what made you... YouTube, <laughs> all the corporations, HBO, HBO, 
uh, so cool with Game of Thrones is you can now have HBO on the was it the app HBO Go so yeah, everybody yeah. could be all be logged on so you can you imagine if that was around when the Sopranos last episode was around oh, everyone yeah. everyone felt like it was overloaded and that's why oh, it yeah. stopped it would be panic but that like, broadened go off and log back on come on that's broadened like you can you could say social media but you could also say like technology and apps really helped everything oh yeah yeah alright so I guess that was a that was a good discussion with the topic so now Jerry and you can get in on get in on this. How can I help you? You've seen this. We're gonna go on the our next segment. Jose called, called Tales of the Filmmaker. Ooh. Oh, that. Okay. Yeah. I'm afraid of the dark. What right. happened to that? Um. Well, that the filmmakers that you're thinking of. Oh, this okay. Is, this is this is tale of, this is tales of filmmakers. So we're gonna go through uh, a couple of my films before film school. I'm just gonna talk about it. You've seen it. I think you've seen a couple, Ian. Oh, Galaxy Wars? Oh, yeah, Galaxy Wars. Ian, thank you for joining us today. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so I don't know if you've seen the original Halloween film that I did. I, was it like a trailer? Yeah. 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 You so, see yourself, you see the so, outside of your house, and yeah. Yeah, so, so I did, I did, I did Halloween, and, uh, I, we're, we are going to do commentary on this, Jerry, and I'll put it up on the, on the, uh, on the YouTube page. No comment. Just for, just for you and me, you and <laughs> no me, comment. and, uh, you and me, and maybe Ian. Maybe a couple of other people just sit there and just troll it. But um, we did Halloween. I did I did unfinished, and uh, it was me and my friends. And we, um, I really wish that I we finished it because it, it was it was hilarious. Um, we we had a flying fake hand. Oh, like the Adams mm. family. Yeah, we had a flying fake hand. I think one of my friends pulled a pulled a pipe out by accident from. Uh, from the basement, like they, he literally reached up to grab a fake pipe and, he and, grabbed, and, pipe. and, and he grabbed the wrong pipe and he pulled the pipe down. Lovely. How'd yeah. your dad react to that? Oh no, it wasn't it wasn't my house. Oh, oh yeah, it wasn't my house. Yeah. So, forget yeah, it. I, I didn't care. It I didn't care. Not my house. Not my problem. If it was my house, I wouldn't be here. I'd probably be. Uh, <laughs> there'd, be there'd be a real uh, <laughs> Halloween movie going. Kevin Montgomery would care though. Yeah. So Nothing Galaxy Wars. House. You've seen Galaxy Wars, right? Yes. Rated from one to ten. <laughs> 40. 40. Oh, God. I think it's Oscar worthy. Out of 100. In the same vein as The Room is Oscar worthy. You know, <laughs> then we can move it on to this. I was just reading an article about how The Room, it's so bad, but you want to keep watching it. Just like Galaxy Wars. <laughs> and it is kind of, I wonder what it is about movies that are so bad, but you're like, let's just put it on. It's almost like we're all collectively, like, we love to, to laugh at it, at how bizarre it is. Because I've watched The Room so far three and times. And that's why collective months. podcasting is coming soon to a theater named you. Name you? Yeah. Name you. Yeah. That's how good our acting the is. The theater's named you, uh, YouTube. Everybody's other fan. Uh, I'm going to roll around to that in a oh. minute. Um, in the original two Black Sun movies that I do not talk of, first speak of. With Voldemort? He yeah. must not, the he, he must not live in here. <laughs> and all of those movies will eventually be seen on YouTube with commentary, with funny commentary between me and Jerry and... Ian and maybe we'll get our friend Joe on who was in a couple of those movies and we'll just make fun of him for a couple of hours. <laughs> what about Our Black Sun, the one that we did four why, years ago? Why, why would you want to make fun of that? No, not make fun of it. Oh, why don't oh. you do a commentary oh, on yeah, it no, and yeah, talk about behind yeah. the scenes stuff? We, we won an I award. mean, I could always yeah. make fun of it. We, 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 we won an award so much that they couldn't spell Jerry's name right. It's it's Gerald. <laughs> I it love it. It was coming to a home name me. There's such that's, an, his, that, that, that's his stage name, Gerald. There, Gerald. There's such an irony when they spell Orson Welles and <laughs> Gerard wrong. Yeah, Gerard. <laughs> you sort of wonder what festival this is. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, people questioned me. I was like, are you sure you didn't know? Here's the email. I remember a friend of yours, you were insulted one of his favorite singers, and he goes, keep it up and I'll tell everybody that the Orson Welles is spelled wrong. You're like, touche. Yeah, touche. <laughs> All right, Jerry. Questions from the collective. Now yeah, this is uh, the segment where uh, I pulled people on Facebook, and uh, we're gonna briefly talk about uh, questions, answer questions. Uh, so I'm gonna read our first victim, yeah. Vincent Moroa. Why is Carpenter ignoring the sequels and making this bizarre, out of place Halloween movie? And what's going on with Caputo Collective's next movie? Oh well, that's a that's a good question. How old is John Carpenter now? Ninety. It's got to be eighty something. I, I think he's like eighty eight or something. He's skinnier yeah. than, than wow. He's I don't know. He's so this is but this is what I think of the Halloween movies. So they're like a um, what are those books where you go to a certain page and it says uh, if you want to 
go left. Pulp novels? No, like so if you want to go left, turn to like page 88. If you want to go right, go to page 68. Like an open world story? Kind yeah, of it's thing? like one of those um, journey books. Mm -hmm. You know, like Pick Your Journey. So it's like, if you want the authentic... Ooh, the, the boxcar kids? Yeah, boxcar kids, whatever. So like, if you want like a regular... No... Like, you want to keep the mystery going? You do Halloween 1, 2, H2O, Resurrection. Mm -hmm. That movie we don't talk of. Uh, Resurrection. You know we I, have a lot to talk about of Resurrection. <laughs> yeah, no, your favorite rapper, Busta Rhymes, is on it. Oh, uh, yeah. I think I've only seen the movie once, and I was watching it back in the day, and I was like, why was this made <laughs> so bad? Is H2O, it? I had a guilty pleasure for it. Just I only saw it once, and I was like, eh. It's okay. See, stuff like Busta Rhymes acting act. is what inspires me to partner with people like Christian, because it always takes somebody like me to partner with somebody like him. Oh, God. Um, I think John Carpenter definitely should have stopped after one, just because I think that the first kind of like the Saw movies a little bit. Well, we can get into that a little after, but the Halloween I thought I remember watching it for the first time years ago, and at the end of it, he just you don't see him anymore. You're you're left with a sense of dread. Yeah, and the music comes in, you're just like he's still out there. Yeah. Now, if you want to, like you said, if you want to go to the second yeah. one, it's if almost you like want you a complete, choose. If you want a complete experience. Because mm -hmm. Halloween 2, you can watch it's Halloween 1. It's it's one long movie. Yeah. It's but, one but, long movie. But you got to keep in mind, John Carpenter's number one was made on a slim budget. The second one I think one it was, was $300,000. Yeah. Made. And also what's cool, he had kind of a Hitchcock feel to it, because you never see... Oh, yeah, see Hitchcock is, is very... Mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm influenced. A lot of, you see a lot of my stuff. It's Hitchcock-y, like John Carpenter-esque... Mm -hmm. Tim Burton. Especially um, the movie that we did, which we'll get into in, in another episode, Mind Vision. Oh, it's man. a lot of um, a lot of fisheye lenses, yeah. a lot of Dutch angles, uh, yeah. a lot of like observations and really make you uncomfortable. Mm, almost like a security camera look. But um, Halloween 3, it's Halloween 3 is a good movie, mm -hmm. but it's sh they should just remove Halloween and just Season of the Witch. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a good movie. It should be I, called Halloween's. Just be, should be called Season of the Witch. Yeah, I what's your opinion? It. I I I I poo pooed it. What's your opinion of the Rob Zombie 2007 Halloween? Uh, now, do are, are we allowed <laughs> to curse on this podcast, Jerry? I don't a see family friendly audience. Okay, family we're allowed family to family. curse, but I don't think we're going to be allowed to do a commercial break if we're going to go into this conversation. Okay, yeah, that's a good well, point. Let's no, do a commercial no, break. No, no, no. I don't have a commercial break. Oh, okay, so we'll just keep going. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Rob Zombie, uh, first one was okay. Yes. I, I enjoyed it. So did I. Um, they could have cut out a lot of the... Cur I think every other word in it was just cursive. F, F, F. F, F, I'm going to do this. F, 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 F. It's like, okay. Well, I did like I the whole serial killer vibe that basically Michael was raised by these really horrible white trash parents. Yeah, but then you you But you it was more of a murder. The, yeah, there was no myth anymore. The of it. Yeah, there was no murder mystery. You anymore. and the, the John Carpenter's all that it was is you the kid, you didn't know who who was the murderer. You mm -hmm. you were just you you were just giving this this scene of You're this person is is stalking these this couple mm -hmm. and you see the hand which is out of focus. Grab a knife. Mm -hmm. Walks up the steps and kills you know, does the killing, and he walk out the side, and spoiler alert, but spoiler alert, it's been like 40 years. <laughs> Actually, you, 40 years this year. Yeah, 40 years this year. Yeah, um, and it's 78. Is, um, it's Michael they, Myers. They removed the mask, and it's this 12-year-old kid. kid. And then it cuts to, what, yeah. 20 years later? Yeah, it's like, oh my god, this this little kid killed, and that's it, you were never, you're never left. And it's you, cool at the end, You're too. never left with an explana explanation as to why. Mm -hmm. And, and then at the end, you're left yeah. even more with, like, what just happened? Is he alive? Is he dead? He mm -hmm. shot him. It's a very experiential story. <laughs> I felt with two, it was good, but at the same time, I just felt like it got too... Was that made quickly after the uh, first one or a couple of years uh, later? First one was 78, right? 78. Uh, second one was 81. Now, by that point, um, I had horror... I had slash movies gone mainstream. Yeah. We had... I think we had... Well, we definitely had... We had... Was it? it was eighty one? No. It was. It was three Friday the Thirteenth movies at that point. Okay, that's why. And okay. then yeah, I think you had Black Christmas. Okay. Um, Did you have Fright Night? Fright Night was eighty five. Okay. Eighty four. Nightmare on Elm Street was eighty four. And Hills Have Eyes was. Hills Have Eyes was eighty. Maybe I don't even know. Last House on the Left I think was seventy nine. I never saw that. But um, what I was getting to was that yeah. Halloween one felt more like 
avant-garde independent yeah. whereas Halloween 2 kind of felt studio-ish yeah. like the first scene is he jumps up and he stabs the guy and the blood shoots at the counter oh, yeah. I'm like okay we're now we're going into like you know whereas one what made it so cool was remember the scene where she's in the car smoking and he comes behind oh, yeah, strangles her great. and then all you just see is him his hand move and then you assume and then the horn oh, goes off scene. and you don't you don't see the knife ever go in but you know it went in um, it's all psychological games it just What's, entails like the cinematic aspect of the movie. Absolutely, John. Jerry, you've seen with that. you you've seen Halloween, right? Absolutely. Oh yeah, so you you understand like the Hitchcock, Carpenter esque type of feeling. Of course. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- you can either watch Halloween one two and then end it there, or ha- Halloween one two, four five, four, five and six. six. Or you can watch Halloween or, one two or H two O and Resurrection. Resurrection now, which, technically, without the or only Halloween. watch Resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> if you go, if you don't do H two O or Resurrection. Um, it just I mean, no, 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 you, yeah. you don't do 4, 5, and 6, mm-hmm. what technically is after Resurrection? I forgot how it ended. How it end? Well, it, it, Resurrection, you just burn. Well, there was Tupac's just, Resurrection. Oh, he dies, actually. Hmm? There was Tupac's Resurrection. Oh, yeah, Tupac's oh, yeah, Tupac Resurrection. Tupac Resurrection, then Notorious B.I.G. Um, yeah. But why, okay, so why is John Carpenter, we went off on a tangent. Yeah, sorry, yeah. But why is John Carpenter ignoring the sequel as well? Um, I, I just, He didn't do them. Well, he, well, <laughs> if you want to get technical... He directed the first one. The second one, he kind of phantom directed. He was a producer, right? Well, he produced it, but he like phantom directed a couple of scenes. So he's pointing out what they did. No, well, because he, they, they didn't have enough gore mm-hmm. in it, so he phantom directed a little more gore in it. And, and he wrote the second one. And then the third one he produced. But what I what my theory is, is that John Carpenter always has said that he hated the fact that in Halloween 2 he made it a brother sister type thing. He didn't like that. He didn't like that. He was he went through really bad uh, writer's block, uh, and he just drank himself drunk, and, he, and he was just writing and just to figure it out. So what I'm thinking is, is he went back and he's fixing a mistake that he made in whenever he was writing it, like 79, 77. 79 or eighty. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's going to be good from what I from what I've been reading and what I've been. Hearing it's going to be a really good film. It's coming out in October. Let's you know hope. me. I'm going to be. I'm going to be there day one. Well, maybe horror, not day one yeah, as we know, gonna... horror remakes like Friday the Thirteenth in 2009. Jeez. That was probably one of the worst remakes and movies I've ever seen. It was just porn. Oh, it's just it was porn oh, yeah, with random action. Beginning. And what was the other question? Oh, what's going on with Caputo Collector's next movie? Well, well, <laughs> well. Now that we, we uh, are, we're this. going to have we're going to have Chris Morcianti on. I don't know if it's going to be next episode, but soon. We're announcing Halloween 10 right for oh, you, yeah. right here. Halloween H25. But we're going to have we're going to have Chris Marcianti on, who's writing our script. Mm-hmm. Who's done. Done with it. He's on the second draft. He's almost done with it. No pressure. Mm-hmm. Uh, no pressure, Chris. Be listening. Uh, and we're going to have him on maybe next episode or um, within the next couple of episodes. We're going to have a discussion with him about his projects, about our project. It's, it's in the woodwork. It's... We're gonna. It's. I can't tell you too much because Chris will kill me. But um, it's it's gonna happen. Under lock and key. It's happening. <laughs> it's finally happening after years of starts and stops. Mm-hmm. It's finally happening. Fully funded, and we're now gonna get into it. And we'll start um, casting soon. Just, just. Well, yeah. But we uh, <laughs> just uh, keep keep a close eye. Keep a close eye on uh, Caputo Collective. On Chris uh, Marciante. Facebook and Twitter. Find us on Facebook and Twitter. We don't want him to kill at, Christian. At, at Caputo, yeah, please. That would be terrible. Even though, even though he's he's co-directing it, which I think he might want to kill me just to direct the whole damn thing. But <laughs> that's uh, that's besides the point. Um, you like an old married couple on set. <laughs> but don't doesn't that make the best? Type of couples to make movies together. Arguing constantly, yeah, I feel so. Of course, I feel. So what's our what's our next question, Jerry? That so next question. This is from Joe Valenti. Will the Netflix characters pop up in movies eventually? Wait. Will the Netflix characters pop up in movies eventually portrayed by the same actors in the MCU? I think what he means is. Oh, the Daredevil. Um, yeah, yeah. Will Daredevil appear? I know. In, like, I know Charlie Cox. Charlie Cox. That's his name. Uh, who plays Daredevil? And a couple other people are contractually obligated to show up if need be in movies. But isn't the movie MCU different from the TV company? Right, well, How does this it work? is you this, this it is me. this is this is where uh, people get confused. A lot of people get confused with this. So, in the beginning, God created heaven. <laughs> in the beginning, in Disney, you had Kevin Feige and you had Ike Perlmutter. I said that right, Ike, okay. Ike Perlmutter, and they were together making the Marvel Cinematic Universe mm-hmm. and you had the studio which was the TV studio and you had the movie department it's back in 08 
This was back in 08 before Disney bought it. Mm -hmm. And then when Disney bought it, they really started ramping up with everything. And when they made Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., um, Joss Whedon and his brother created Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. around Phase 2 of the movies. Which was began with After uh, Avengers? Which was Iron Man 3 um, up until Ant-Man. Ant oh, okay. Um, so Avengers 2 was within yeah. that. So movie. what happens is, is that... Um, well, they can't say anything because they don't know me. But uh, from from what I've heard from a lot of people from a lot of, within the industry, that Ike Perlmutter is cheap, <laughs> and he doesn't want to. We love you, Ike. If you're listening. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> and he doesn't want to uh, spend a lot of money. Uh -huh. So um, that's why we almost lost Robert Downey Jr. after Iron Man Three. He wanted. So it wasn't the movie that he. Yeah, that it wasn't. Quit. It wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> that he wanted to quit. It was that. Is was that they didn't want to pay him the money, mm -hmm. and they were just cutting costs left and right. And it was causing friction between Kevin Feige and the tel television department mm -hmm. of this Marvel. And there was no, this is oh, after the, and there was a friction between them. Finally, Disney put their foot down and separated the departments and said, "Kevin Feige, you don't have to answer to us. You will oversee everything, and Ike will just be a part of the television, the television series. series." That's why there's a lot of disconnect between. Yeah. So, like, if you watch Daredevil, they refer to mm -hmm. Of the Avengers movie, the Battle of New York, as the incident, yeah. they'll never say Battle of New now York. Is that a or, personal thing between? That's Ike probably and... a personal thing between both of them. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> regurgitating what I hear. A big question I have is: now that Wesley Snipes is out of jail after the whole tax evasion thing, is he going to bring back Blade? That they want to. They want to bring With it back as. Or... I I would do it as a Netflix series. I totally would because Blade um, is such one of those characters where like you can go off on you can do so much. Vampires and stuff. Vampires and stuff. Let me okay. see. So, uh, not that one. So, uh, not that one. So, Jerry. Um, oh, I have to talk from, now? Come this on. This is from Anonymous. I was having such a great time listening to both of you. This is from Anonymous. <laughs> so, what type of music are you influenced by, Jerry? The Spice Girls, right? The Spice Girls, the rap version. Sarah McLaughlin, you know, like it's the Sarah McLaughlin. Oh my God. Yeah. If I was to do a rap thing with her, that would be beautiful. <laughs> Vanessa Carlton, all the goods, right? All the goodies. He just answered all my questions. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> no, but I have to say, though, rap is my biggest inspiration in terms of all the music. I get into like, a lot of other stuff later on in life. But rap is the foundation of how like I'll sonically listen to music, how I interpret music, uh, so some of the meanings behind like the songs that I listen to. So that's definitely like within my sense of inspiration. What do you, uh, you think of? Uh, oh, sorry, what do you think of Kendrick Lamar's new song from? Uh, Black he, he never ceases to amaze me. So good. in terms of just how he's been able to transpire into more pop music, mm -hmm. uh, especially working with someone like SZA, mm -hmm. he's doing really well with that and paving his own lane that way. Mm -hmm. For the amount of Grammys that he's won, he still hasn't lost his element of what's brought him to like the premise of his music. Who's who's your favorite? Um, I guess you said rap music is your influence. Well, who's your favorite uh, rapper, or who's influenced you? Because I know Q-Tip. Because you, you you do music. Q-Tip. Q-Tip from a tribe called Quest. I oh, would say I he's yeah, yeah, yeah. he's pretty much my biggest influence in terms of the way he was able to set his own style back then and. People weren't really like reverting to that until later on. So I, I, I'm a big fan of people who are icons at the time, mm -hmm. and then people like embrace themselves through the scope of what he's created. Mm -hmm. I know you and me worked with a couple of rappers doing music videos. Yeah, me. Yeah, you, yeah, no. like Shaheem and stuff. From uh, what are you saying? I'm not a rapper. You yeah, want to no, have beef right now? You want to hold this back? No, 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 no. Not Island 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 Island. no, that's that's that's. Oh, I don't show. No, that's uh, a TV thing. Uh, what was the one that with the rapper that you told me about? That you oh, guys... G Smalls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we, what happened to him? Oh, I don't know. he's doing really well right now. I think he's working with the MTA. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's doing great with his yeah, son. He's, good. he's good. very good. good All right, so Jerry, this is the last question of the episode. So, will you get back into promoting and doing events? That's why I hired Ian Ford to speak on the first episode of Caputo Collab. <laughs> <laughs> what, I'm going to be the promoter now? Absolutely. Okay. No. Uh, but it's, I do miss doing it a well, lot. Music, well, mu well, I know you're doing events for like the JCC, but music... You, you music did Broken Records music. Magazine for a while. I used to do that for a long time, promoting shows for... I've interviewed a bunch of bands ranging from Judas Priest to Mayday Parade, Stone Temple Pilots. Overstank. Stank. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And uh, with a lot of the music that I used to do, I would book between local bands for pop punk, for more hardcore stuff. I would do hip hop. That I've done festivals before. I do miss the 
lifestyle even to it. It was very exhilarating to say the least. Will I get back to it soon? I'm not going to say soon, but never say never. Um, what was your favorite mm. band to work with? Oh, man. There's, there's a bunch. Pressure, pressure, pressure. pressure. <laughs> with the punches, they, they unfortunately broke up a couple years ago. They were very nice people to work with. They were from New. They were from Newburgh, New York. Oh, okay. Oh, upstate. Yeah. yeah. I was going to ask you if they were local because I, I don't recognize the um... Young Statues was very nice. Uh, they're from Philadelphia, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Did you work with Sanitarius ever? A couple times. A couple times, like when I first started. Okay. I worked with them once in 2011, and then like late 2012. Okay. Uh yeah. So uh, that's it for the first episode. I want to thank everybody for listening in. I have a couple of plugs. You're very patient people. Oh yeah, I want to, I want to plug some things. Find us on Twitter and Facebook on and Instagram on Caputo Collective. Um, just type it in, you'll find us. You, it's a Caputo Collective's got a dragon on it. Join the collective, everybody. Um, Show us if you want. We're always there. Yeah. Uh, now go to the Caputo Collective on Patreon. We have some great um, things on there. Uh, right now we're building it up, but uh, if you want to be Patreon, you'll be able to get the podcast a little earlier. Um, we're gonna we're gonna drop and you the... get to hear my jokes for free. Oh yeah, you're not gonna want what to an that. incentive! <laughs> we're gonna drop the podcast. See now, so let me tell you how the podcast is gonna go. So we're gonna do two we're gonna do two podcasts a month every other week. Um, you can get the pod. It's gonna drop on Friday on a, on the Friday of the, every other week. Um, if you become a Patreon, you'll get the podcast early on Wednesday. I'm going to try to get that out on Wednesdays um, to, for the Patreons. So take a look at the Caputo Collective on Patreon in there and um, subscribe to the Caputo Collective on YouTube. Uh, it's, it's either Caputo Productions or Caputo Collective. I have to change the name. But if you find us, it's the same logo. There's a couple of videos on there. There's trailers. There's me talking, welcoming you from a couple years ago. Hasn't really been active, but we're since we're doing this now, we're going to be active and just follow us, and we're going to be updating you on a lot of stuff, a lot of cool stuff, a lot of movies behind the scenes. We might do a couple of music videos soon, depending on how depending on how that works out. Behind the scenes footage, um, just some great things. Just keep an eye out. So Jerry, yes, one in the bag. How do you feel? I feel very, very good. All right. Say your goodbyes, Jerry. <laughs> bye. All right, thank you, everybody, for for listening in. And, if you uh, saw my hand, bye. Yeah, Jerry's waving for everybody. But uh, thank you for everybody for listening in for the good old collective with the collective podcast. <laughs>